And welcome back to The Watchman from our TBN Jerusalem studio. Well, a few months back here on The Watchman, we took you to the amazing fortress of Masada, where a group of Jewish rebels made a legendary last stand against Rome after the destruction of the Second Temple. But Masada was not the end of the story. Some 60 years later, there was one final bloody uprising against Rome called the Bar Kokhba Revolt. Now the end result was that the Jewish people were scattered from Israel to the ends of the earth for nearly 2,000 years. Our good friend, leading Israeli tour guide and archaeologist Danny the Digger Herman shows us the causes of the revolt, including the Roman Emperor Hadrian rebranding the holy city of Jerusalem as a pagan city called Elia Capitolina with a pagan shrine on top of the Temple Mount. Imagine that. This is a crucial part of history, folks, that many Christians have never even heard. Danny, take it away. Hi, Eric. We met at Masada and have learned about this tragic site where the last of the Jews lost their independence. They actually favored uh, committing suicide and fall to the hands of the Romans. But this marks the very ending of Jewish sovereignty here in the Holy Land. The Romans not only killed and enslaved so many Jews, they also enforced humility taxes upon them. They confiscated Jewish territory and land and gave it to their own veterans. And from a Jewish point of view, things couldn't get worse. The year AD 117 seemed to mark the dawn of a new era. A Christian source called Eusebius tells us that despite Hadrian's good intentions, the Jews rebelled against the Roman Empire again, as if they didn't learn from the first rebellion. And that led to another devastation another uh, uh, total destruction of what was left of the Jewish presence here. And then Hadrian forms here a new city as punishment called Elia Capitolina. But the Roman source called Dio Cassius tells us the opposite. He tells us no. Hadrian decided to build Jerusalem but as a pagan city. And that led to the Jewish rebellion. How can we know who got it right, if Zebius or Dio Cassius? Dr. Shlomit Wexler Bdolach of the Israel Antiquities Authority has led excavations at this site, just 100 meters from the Western Wall in the last 10 years. Her conservation team is still working here at this site, and she made some very remarkable discoveries that can solve that issue. The major question is what happened first? Was the foundation of Ilia Capitolina the incentive that drove the Jews mad and led them to the Second Rebellion? Or was the rebellion of Bar Kokhva resulted with the formation of a pagan city called Ilia Capitolina? The Romans ruined everything that was still standing from 60 years before. But when we excavate in such a place, we see that it was not really ruined to ground level. Here and there, there were still the lower parts of buildings of the Second Temple period that were still standing, ruined, but standing. Uh -huh. Let's say here, just behind us, there is an installation which is coated with plaster, gray plaster. And this is very typical to an installation that was incorporated in a house of the Second Temple period. And just a few meters above it, we cannot see it from the place where we stand, is a ritual bath, mikveh also of a second temple period. So we know that houses of the second temple period were built on the slopes of the hill where we are standing now. And when I imagine what was happening around the one square kilometer of the old city of today, that this is more or less the area of Elia Capitolina, the Jewish people that were the merchants, Jews and other people that were wandering around, what did they see? Mm -hmm. They saw that houses that were still standing from 70, ruined, but still standing here and there, were now raised to ground by Hadrian when they were making the preparations to build a new city. Because the plan, the layout of the new Roman city of Elia Capitolina is totally different from the layout of the Herodian city that was ruined. But did they know what is going to happen on the Temple Mount? Or the, what the, did they think? The, I think that most of the changes took place around the Temple Mount. And uh -huh. this, they must have noticed it. Because what we see about the Roman works around the Temple Mount is that they did everything um, in relation 
to the Temple Mount, emphasizing the Temple Mount. So my conclusion is that if this street parallels exactly the western wall of the Temple Mount, and from here in two places I see streets, so the whole layout of the area immediately west of the Temple Mount emphasizes the Temple Mount. It indicates, in my opinion, that there was something very important on top of the Temple Mount. Right. And Diocasius says that the, the Bar Kokhva war yes. broke because the Romans not only built a city instead of Jerusalem, they built El Capitolina, but on top of Temple Mount, he founded a temple to Jupiter. Cassius Dio, an historian of the third century, he writes, yes. at Jerusalem, he, Hadrian, founded a city in place of the one which had been raised to the ground, naming it Elia Capitolina, and on the site of the Temple of God, he raised a new temple to Jupiter. To Jupiter. <laughs> this brought on a war of no slight importance, nor of brief duration, for the Jews deemed it intolerable that foreign races should be settled in the city and foreign religious rites planted there. So all of this work leads to the creation or is part of the creation of a temple. And maybe the Jews fought for a while, it's going to be the renewal of their temple, but Diocasius makes it clear, no, it was for Jupiter. And in 132, that leads to the second and famous Jewish rebellion, the Bar Kokhva rebellion. Shlomit, thank you so much. The finds made at this site by Dr. Wexler Bdolach and her team is truly significant. They demonstrate to us that Jerusalem was being reshaped and rebuilt already in the 120s. And the Jews, the survivors of the first Jewish rebellion seeing this, could think that maybe it means that Adrian is changing the policy and they're going to rebuild the Jewish temple. And in the year AD 130, Adrianus is visiting this region. But that actually clarifies that he does not have any intention to rebuild a Jewish temple. He's going to build a temple for Jupiter, for a Capitolinian triad. This is an insult. Not only is the Jewish temple destroyed, but a pagan complex is going to be built over it. They are going to rebel again. Again, the first rebellion ended in a catastrophic way. But the Jews, for religious freedom, are willing to take all the chances. Now, they've learned a lesson from the first rebellion. You do not face the Roman imperial legionary forces out in the open field. No one will win against them. But you can fight against them in a guerrilla tactics. And that's what they do. They create hideouts. Diocasius describes how they made underground tunnels and prepared weapons. And two years after Hadrian is gone, in the spring of AD 132, the rebellion breaks out. And in the next episodes, we will see how the rebellion started and how it ended. <laughs>